Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I think today we are featuring what must be one of the most original puzzles we have ever tried to solve on Cracking the Cryptic. It's called Ein Ectus Shack Sudoku. Uh, which apparently is German for a real chess Sudoku, and it's by Christian Koenig. Um, and I think it must be a sort of a response to Christian's, um, I suppose, uncomfortableness with our usual description of what a chess Sudoku is. So normally in chess Sudoku, we say digits that are a knight's move apart from each other, um, you know, can't be the same digit and things like that. Whereas this puzzle is it's quite unbelievable. Uh, you can well, obviously, we've sort of depicted at the start here, uh, uh, the start of a game of chess. Our job, as we solve this puzzle, is to go, be, well, is to work out what the current position of a game we're playing is, and then solve a Sudoku. I mean, it's 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 an incredibly original idea, um, and yeah, well. We've actually only had reports from one of the testers so far on this, and the, but the report was that this is absolutely brilliant. So um, I'm looking forward to trying it. Apparently, it's quite challenging, even if you're good at chess. Um, so make of that what you will. Uh, hopefully, we'll get Magnus Carlsen uh, to solve it very soon, too. Uh, if any of you know him, do let him know. Um, now, what else do I need to tell you about? Uh, well, last night, Mark and I streamed um, our latest uh, playthrough of our 500,000 subscribers special app. I think we got five puzzles done in the time. If you want to watch Mark and I struggle mightily with relatively straightforward puzzles, then watch the start of that stream. We were abysmal. Um, I made a right mess of Ars van der Vetering's uh, antler puzzle, which was a knight's move puzzle, which probably doesn't bode well for this chess Sudoku today. Um, and then Mark struggled mightily with a clover Sudoku and, well, Clover is an absolutely brilliant constructor, but normally not so difficult. So we were we were in a right mess. Anyway, it improved a little bit after that, but and we did enjoy it mightily. So thanks to all of you who spent your Saturday evenings with us, um, and apologies that I drank wine throughout the stream. Uh, other than that, what else is going on? Well, we've got um, Jabberwocky, uh, our solve of this puzzle up here um, by Dad Jokes. That is available. Uh, on Patreon right now. And it's a very unusual thing because Mark and I solve the puzzle simultaneously. Well, together, we're, we're, we're applying both our minds to it to try and get through it as quickly as we can. Um, and yeah, that video has been getting some good feedback. So uh, we hope you enjoy it. If you want to just try the puzzle Jabberwocky though, there is a link to it under the video. And of course, we are, must be near, we must be closing in on the oh hang on my phone is for some it's the 18th of september today so two more days to get in your solutions for our september monthly reward and be in with a chance of winning the competition so do try and get your entries to us fairly quickly from now on um other than that oh there, there are some birthdays actually uh kevin you've turned 29 today um i think you're originally from ireland but living in australia and your wife ella uh, who has been converted to Cracking the Cryptic herself, um, said um, that you might appreciate a shout out. So Kevin, we wish you a happy 29th birthday. Um, also uh, from Sydney, Australia, I think Daniel, uh, it's your birthday today. I'm not sure how old you are, but your fiance Nadia, let us know that. And finally from Bosnia and Herzegovina, Almir, You've turned 53 today, and I know this because your daughter Miriam got in touch with us and said that you enjoy the channel a lot, uh, and you'd appreciate a shout out. So I hope all three of you have got uh, a day full of cake and celebration. Um, that's all I've got to tell you. So let's have a look at what Christian's got in store for us. We'll check out the, these rules here that I'm about to read you. Um, right now, we are in the middle of a game of chess. There have been some moves made by standard chess rules, but neither a capture nor a castling have yet taken place. Also, every piece has been moved at most once. Every piece carries a digit from 1 to 8, as shown in the initial grid. This digit must appear in the current cell of the piece in the game we're partway through. In the current game position, the whole grid can be filled with the digits 1 to 8 
such that every digit appears in every row, column and box exactly once. Can you discover the current chess position and solve the Sudoku? So I think what this is saying, this is showing us the sort of start position of the board. And you can see every piece, literally every piece has a little number assigned to it. Um, so let's have a think about this pawn here, which has six in it. So that pawn, I suppose that pawn can only be in three different positions, given that pawns can only, well, all the pieces can only move once. So a pawn either stays there, goes here or goes here, I think. Obviously, if we were allowed to have captures taking place, it could be off the board altogether or it could be anywhere, really. But that's, and we're only allowed to move it once. Yes. Yeah, so, so I think the position of this pawn is only one of those three cells and therefore in the current position one of these cells must be a six is i think what's going on do have a go the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual now i get to play let's get cracking let's get chessing and okay how do we do this then so presumably uh, hang on a minute, let me think. Well, what I'm seeing straight away is I've got two of the same digit in in the same row of the grid. So one of these digits, or not one of these digits, one of these pieces, or I suppose both of these pieces, cannot stay there. Because if they were both in this position, in our in the position of the game we've, we're, we're playing, they would both have five, and that would be... That would break the rules of Sudoku. Yeah, so wherever we get the same digit appearing in the same row, column or box, we have to move something. So we'll, we presumably we want to find... All right, we've got three ones in the grid. I can see that. Oh, look, and the knight can come out here or here, or I suppose go... Yeah, oh, goodness, yeah, okay. So... This is com this is complicated because this pawn could go there and then that knight could go there. Uh, hang on a sec. How do we even start this? Three. Oh, we've got three, three. Oh, we've got quite a lot of threes actually at the top of the grid. Have we got threes at the bottom of the grid? Some mavericks taken off to fly past, of course. Um. Right, so somehow all of these pieces have to not end up breaking the rules of Sudoku. So that pawn is in one of those positions. So this queen can't stay in that position. That must be right, because the pawn is in one of these three. So there is a three relating to the pawn in one of those three cells. So this has got to get out of column four. But I mean, it's a queen. It can do that in a variety of ways. Uh, oh dear, I'm not making a good fist of this at all. So far, I've got no pencil marks. Well, let's try sixes. I seem to have a few sixes in the grid. Let's just have a quick look at those. Um... Well, at least one of the rooks has to get off the bottom rank. No, well, I'm not sure. I don't think sixes are very interesting, are they? Ah, hang on, I've got three sevens. Ah, ah, here is a point. I've got three sevens in the grid that are all pawns. They're all white pawns. So, doesn't this create sort of a swordfish of pawn, a swordfish of sevens? By which I mean that because pawns can only be in one of three positions in each case because they're pawns, the, the sevens in columns three, seven and eight must occupy only those cells. And that means in these rows... Well, the facetious way to see what I'm thinking here is to ask how many sevens we think they're going to, they are going to be in these three rows of the Sudoku. And the answer is only three sevens altogether, because there's going to be a seven in that row, a seven in that row, and a seven in that row. But we know that there are three sevens in purple, so that means that none of these cells can be a seven. 
and that's about as well hmm I was about to say that's about as useful as a chocolate teapot, but I suppose what it does mean is that this this bishop <laughs> never goes into those squares. Because if it did, if this bishop's move was in that, into those squares, that would break the puzzle again, because there would be too many sevens in rows five, six, and seven. I've got three fives as well, so I've got I've got the same. I've got a swordfish on fives as well. Um, although that five can't go two cells. Uh, hang on a sec. Let me just think about that. Let me just. Get, I'm just going to get rid of my purple highlighting for a moment, and I'm going to change it to highlighting those cells for the fives. So, hmm, I've also got, actually, I've also got more fives up here. Uh, sorry, I hadn't realised there are actually a lot of fives in this grid. This, I'm trying to work out whether there's a restriction on this bishop. Is it? it Yeah, I mean, if that bishop stays put in the finished grid, then both these pawns have to be pushed. And this pawn could only go there. Oh, that doesn't work. Oh, that's right. Hang on. Right, I've got something. I've got something. In this box, I think this bishop has to move. Because if it if it stays there, I don't know how to how to record a staying there of a piece. Let's maybe use the line tool. If we go, oh, I'm getting attacked by a fly, go away. Um, oh, I'm on redness. I don't know why that's, I've got red, red lines. Well, that's actually quite cute. So let's imagine this bishop stays here and I haven't moved it in the current version of the game. Well, then what I think must happen is because these can now not be fives, both these pieces have to be pushed, but they both therefore end up in box, whatever box that is, box five, and they're going to repeat in that box. So that's not right. So this, this cell or this, this piece has to move. Now, what does that mean? Well, I'm wondering where it moves to because it can't move here, I don't think. So if it moves, oh, hang on, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah, I can. If I move, if I move it there, then our swordfish on fives breaks the world, doesn't it? Because the logic that I did on sevens before applies equally to fives. I cannot put fives in this puzzle in any of those cells because I know that the three fives that it must be in rows five, six and seven are in green. So I can't add another five there. So this 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 can't this can't go here and it can't go there either because that's going to repeat that's going to put two fives in this column because there's going to be a five for the pawn and a five for the bishop. So I can't go here or there's two fives again. Now, can it go there? That might be possible. That would require this one. To, no, that doesn't work again. Oh, this is this is definitely it. This is I think this is the start because it's really constrained. Right. If this bishop goes here, this pawn cannot advance, so it must stay there. But that staying there forces these pawns to get out of row seven and into box five, where they will clash. So so this bishop doesn't go here or here because it will clash with the pawn. Or, oh, this is beautiful. Good grief. Right. It goes there. It's the only place this bishop can go because it can't go here or there'll be two fives in this column because there will be a black pawn and a white bishop, both of which have a five attaching to them. So this cell or this bishop go, goes there. 
Um, now, that means that's a 5. And it means that this must have moved out of the way, doesn't it? I don't see how this... We are playing real chess, aren't we? So I have to, I have to obey the rules of chess. I can't just say this can just move out here. So I think this has to move. Now this is a 5 and it's not equal to 2 therefore. There is a knowledge bomb for you. So this must go here I think. Um, and I probably want to have some way of keeping track of what has moved where. So let's go back to our line tool. So this one has gone there. Oh goodness. And now I'm going to get overlapping. Oh I see. I can. What I could do is change the colour of this one. I'll make this one green. So that one, the bishop has gone there, the pawn has gone here. Now, ah, 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 now this one can't move because if this moves into one of those squares, it's going to repeat five in box five. So that stays in the same position. So how do we signify that? We'll put a circle around it, which means it, it is not allowed to move which means this one has to move and it can't go there because it would clash with this one and that means this one goes here on the same diagonal as the other five but these obviously don't see each other through the medium of Sudoku so this this one has advanced as oh hang on I want to advance it using no I want to use a different color so I use red again um, now I'm going to get rid of my green. Oh, am I going to get rid of my green highlighting actually? No, because I'm just realizing I've not thought of. Oh, this this one's got to stay still because it if it's a pawn. So it would have to come into those cells and it would clash with the bishop that's now on this cell. So this stays the same, which means it gets a circle. Oh, now I should give it the same color circle as its friend. So that gets a green circle. And is therefore a five. Oh, okay, that's a five. So now, and that's a five, of course, as well. Sorry, I should have just done that instantly. Um, so now I've got five fives in the grid. But I've got these two. Oh, right. This is interesting as well. Because that cell, or that rook, can't stay where it is because it's going to clash with this pawn so this has to move and that's going to t force the the knight to move so yeah okay so where does the knight that given the rook has to move where does the knight move to well from Chesterdoku, we know, sorry Christian, uh, it, it's got to go in one of those three cells. That one sees a five already, that one sees a five already, so that's a knight. That is a five, and it's that cell, um, which we will we'll just draw a, a line like that. Oh, that's going to confuse me as regards this pawn. Uh, I'm just wondering if I meant to... It would, I'd really like to, n I don't know what to do. I don't know whether to try and indicate that this has gone here or not, because the knight, it's really difficult to show that the knight's moved. I'll go with that, that and hope, I hope that that's what I'm in, meant to do. Now I'm going to switch back to green for this one, because we know this has to move. Oh. No, I, oh, I thought I'd broken the puzzle then, but I haven't. I haven't broken it. It can go one in one position. Given the rook has to move, it can't come into box two because this five will clash. It doesn't seem to be able to go in these two columns. They've already got fives in, so it must go exactly there, which means that that becomes a five. Two, three. I've now got seven fives in the grid, so I should be able to get a five. Where's the other five? I've not put a five in this box. So that's a five, which means that the, what's that? That's the white king has to move <laughs> because it's, it's, it's got a three on it. It's a three number, so it's not a five number. Now, good grief. I mean, what, what are you meant to do with this? So now... This bishop has to move. 
because because this six is in the same column so this this pawn is either staying where it is or coming here one of those cells is a six this bishop has to move which means one of these pawns at least has to move uh, Oh dear, sorry, I'm, uh, I'm not seeing what I have to do there. I might have to do something with... I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know what I meant to do. <sighs> ah, okay. Let's think about this then. This is trapped in my rook. So this, this rook has to go vertically, I think. Hang on, let me just make sure I'm understanding this. So this pawn is not now moving. So this rook, its final position is either where it is at the moment or somewhere in the bottom row, which means this rook can't stay in the bottom row but because we can only move each piece once how does this rook get off the bottom row well that means this pawn has to advance so this pawn has to go into one of those two cells i think and this rook has to go into one of these two cells Now, do we have any way of discerning how that's going to work? So we've either got a sort of, well, if we could, if we could force this pawn to stop here and not go there, then we would be cooking with gas. Ah, hang on, hang on. So this pawn advances into box six. So this pawn cannot, cannot advance into box six because there'll be two sevens. So that pawn stays there and gets a circle and that gets a seven then as well. It's actually quite hard to see the number when I put the circle around it. So maybe I've got to find a different way of annotating this. Yeah, sorry, I'm not very comfortable. I can see the digit, so I'm going to get rid of those circles and instead maybe I'll box the digit. Will that be a good idea? Maybe I just put a box around it to indicate that that piece is not moving. I have considered it and it cannot move. So, okay. So this pawn has to move as well. Because otherwise if there's already a seven in its row. Yeah, okay, so this is now forcing an X wing on sevens in boxes six and, uh, sorry, five and six. So I suppose I pencil mark a seven in one of those for this pawn advancing. Um. <laughs> Okay. And what does that mean? So it's fine if, it's fine for these rooks to be in the same column because they have different numbers on them. I mean, what am I meant to do now? Is it this king having to move that somehow somehow meant to tell me something let's highlight all the all the positions for threes in the grid because there are quite a lot of those there are those four at the top oh actually no there are only two only two at the bottom so there are there are six threes so of the eight threes we've got to place in the puzzle Six are definitely belonging to pieces. Ah, now this, ah, right. Hang on, I hadn't noticed this. Because this stays the same, 
that rook is operating along in the first row. And that means these have to move. So, hmm, okay. Right, I see. This, this is actually, this is really clever stuff, actually. This is a very, very, very good puzzle. I can already see that because watch, watch what's happening now. The fact that this moves, we then have to ask to where does it move? But this king, where does this king go? Now, this king moves one cell. Now, this pawn is sort of taking up column four, c column four is three. So this king cannot come into either of these cells or it will be a second three in column four. So this king is moving to, well, it's not moving here because this rook's in this row. So this king is moving into one of those two cells. It's either going here or here. But that means that this rook can't stay in box two because then it's going to clash with the king. So this rook has to come at least, a, well, it can't come to there because we know there's a pawn operating in this column. So it goes there because we know that there's another rook here. This is ridiculous. So this cell, um, what color can I make this reasonably? I'll make this green. That rook goes there, and that's going to force the bishop to move. This is going to get fiendishly complicated, by the way. So now all sorts of things are going on. The rook has moved. The bishop here, which is a six, has to move. This pawn here has to move now because of this three. So one of those two cells is going to have to be a three. This queen is going to have to move. This king, we know that had to move, and we now, we, we well, I've always known actually it can never go left because of this pawn. So this, oh no, I can go there, bobbins. Uh, the three can go there because although it, there's obviously a line coming from this, that's moving the pawn forwards, making room for this king to potentially go into that cell so that one of those three cells has got to be a king. So there is now an, a sort of weird x-wing on threes, by which I mean, if we look at column four and column five, we've got threes in these cells. And that means they are the two threes that we're going to put into column five and column six combined. There's only going to be one three in each of those columns. And we know that those threes are now pinioned into those five cells there. So there can't be any threes in these cells, which now does that stop these queens doing something strange? Hmm. I'm not sure. This is complicated. <laughs> <laughs> this is very complicated. Now, that queen can't go left. Yeah, okay, where does this queen go? If it goes here, it clashes with this three, so it doesn't do that. So it, so if it, if it does go along the diagonal, it's got to be in one of those two where it can't be because this pawn is ending up in there. So this queen which can't stay in the top row because of the rook has to come along this diagonal now if it goes here its three is going to clash with the king that exists in box two so it doesn't go there it doesn't go here because of this weird x-wing on threes it doesn't overlap another piece so does that queen go there i think that's massive if that's the case because that coming down this diagonal seems to stop that cell being a seven. I don't see what's wrong with that logic. So if this is a three and that's the queen, that's now a seven, which relates to the pawn beneath it. And that's locking the, that means this rook can only go one vertically. 
This is freakishly clever. I mean, yesterday... Oh, hang on. This is good as well. That's a seven now. We've unwound our early swordfish on sevens. So now, now this is brilliant because now I can say, uh, let's go line tool. That pawn has advanced two. That pawn has advanced one. Uh, the rook in the corner has advanced one. Now I get some more digits. That's got to be a six because it's got to be relate to this rook. Um, so these pieces have now moved. This piece is staying the same. This knight is an eight and can't go there anymore. So there is an eight. Oh no, the eight could stay the same. Of course. Oh, well, although it's not possible both of those eights stay the same. Oh, this is so complicated. It really is complicated uh, in a sort of weird and wonderful way. Now, if this queen that doesn't stop this being the king does it because the king could move to this cell later why is that red oh that was just me highlighting all of the cells that had three in right so hang on what about the queen down here then now yeah oh no actually yeah well hang on hang on Let's check this queen, because I think it is a bit under pressure. So this queen, can it stay where it is? No, because it will clash with the pawn. Can it go to the right? Well, if it goes here, we know that the king here is going to end up in box eight. So then, then there's going to be two threes in box eight. That doesn't work. It can't go here or here because there's a three here. And it can't go there because of this three. So this queen, which cannot stay still, Ah, can it go, can it stay in the bottom row though? I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. It can. Ah, well, I forget everything I've just said. I was, I was hoping I was going to be able to force it to come up this diagonal. Especially as this pawn sort of moved, hasn't it, to make way for it. In fact, if it goes up this diagonal, it can't go it can't go here because of that three. It can't go here because of that three. So this either it can't stay the same, can it? So this this queen goes there or there or there or oh, hang on, hang on. Now now I'm getting confused about the king. Hang on. Okay, so this can't say the same. There, there. If it goes diagonally, it goes there. If it stays in the bottom row, it goes there, there. But if this king, if I could stop this king going into these cells, then this queen, so the king would go there and the queen would go there. Now, what's wrong with that? Oh, hang on. Sudoku on threes is a little interesting in that box. Where's the three go in this box? Well, it, it does have, it's got two options. It's actually got to be in one of those cells, which is, that doesn't stop the queen going here though. So, ah, but if that was a three, then the queen couldn't go here or here. Could the queen go there then? Oh, I don't know. And what about over this side? No, no, we know we know if the queen goes right, it clashes with the king. So actually this is really restricted. This queen can't go right because the king is in here with a three on it. So it either goes there or here or here. So, so if this is three, then that is definitely a three and that would move, that would force our knight to move. Oh 
Wow. Um, I don't know where to look. I'm, I'm intrigued by this queen. I think this queen is doing something. I just can't figure out what it is. Have I... Hang on. If I double click threes, I, I've hardly got any threes in the grid. Even though I've got so many, so many restrictions on threes, I've only actually managed to place two. Which is a bit disappointing. Three. Hang on, let me think about this. If that's a three, where does my queen move? That's not a three. I'm just, I was just looking at the Sudoku. Where does three go in this box? Now, bear with me here because I am far from sure what I'm about to say is correct. But the three is not in these cells because of the pawn. So it's not there. The three is not in these two cells because there's a three here. The three is not equal to five. So I was wondering whether that could be a three. Because if the three isn't there, then there's a three in the bottom row and that's not a three. Now if this was a three, where do I move my queen? And I don't think it can go anywhere because this could be a three. And that's going to clash with that. This could be the queen, but that's going to clash with that. Or this could be the queen if the queen moves diagonally, and that's going to clash with that. So under no circumstances can you put a put three here, because that stops the queen moving. And that means in this box there is a three and a domino, and that means this cell is not a three. And that means one of these two cells is a three. And that means means the king goes to one of these cells, which pushes. So if the if the king went here, the pawn would have to move, and the pawn is a two, so it would have to go here. And that's not possible because. He says, mm, no, I don't know why that's not possible. Uh, oh, if that's the king, then the knight. Oh, this knight can stay where it is. Oh, this is really, this is it's intriguing, isn't it? But it's not straightforward for me, at least. I wonder if, and I know we have some absolutely world-class chess players who follow Cracking the Cryptic. I wonder if you're really good at chess whether you have an advantage in sort of thinking the, these these sort of Sudoku type moves through, or whether in theory somebody who does as many Sudokus as I do is at an advantage. Now hang, ah, does that, s oh no. I was gonna say this six has to stay put now because we know that the the knight comes here, but of course the six could, the, 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 the pawn could move here before the knight moves here. So there could be a six here. Right, let's do some more Sudoku then. Let's see if Sudoku can save us. Ah, that knight does have to move, I've just realised, because this pawn is a one. So this pawn is now in one of those two, which forces this not to stay put. So this one can't... Ah, ah I hadn't spotted this. Right, this one, this knight can't go there because of the given one. So this has to move into one of those two cells. And oh, this is beautiful. That's really beautiful. Because unless I'm mistaken, I'm saying this because I'm worried I am. Because this has to move, which I think it does, and it can't go here. It must move into one of those cells, which means this pawn cannot now advance. So that pawn... It's meant to be ringed with our special black label, and therefore that becomes a one.
Now that look, what's that doing over here? Now, well, okay, that's forcing this pawn to move. So that pawn's got to go in one of those two cells because it can't stay where it is or it's going to clash here. So the one in box uh, one is in one of two places. Um, but we know that, well, oh no, it's not, it's not in two places, it's in one place. Because once once one is ruled out there and the pawn moves here, the one can't go there anymore. They're good grief, this is so weird. So that becomes a one, which is, okay, but that's on the position of the queen, but we know the queen goes down there. But, but now, this being a one, what's that doing? Don't know, it might not be doing anything. It's four seven. Well, I already knew this was moving. Two, what have I got to put along here? Four sixes and eights. Four, six, eight. Now, what do I know about four, sixes, and eights? Well, our mm, okay, well, this eight could come there, so I can't assume this can't be eight just because I've got an eight here. If this knight comes into either of those cells, that would be forced to be an 8. Oh, i tell you something I've not really thought about yet, and that's this bishop has to move, because this rook has to move through its cell. So this bishop, which is a 7... Right, oh, this, is, this is quite interesting, because this bishop can't... Because this pawn stays where it is, this bishop has to come out here. So it, it has to, it's a seven, so it can't come all the way down here. So this bishop, can it just go one cell? Does that block the queen? Oh no, we don't know the, we don't know the order that everything's happening in. So the queen could like move here really early and then the bishop could move here and then it wouldn't have blocked the queen's move. But but okay, this digit now has to, this, this cell has to advance, this pawn has to advance or it's locked the bishop in. So there must be a seven in one of those. I don't know if I know which. So if this bishop can't stay where it is because the rook goes through its cell. So if it goes there, we can't go here. Yeah, no, this is this is forced because of this seven. It's the same sort of logic again. I'm just really struggling to see it with any sort of fluidity. But this cell has to, this bishop has to move. If it stopped here, it would clash with the pawn. So it doesn't stop here. If it goes here, well, I think it does go there. I think it does go there because if it continues, it clashes with this seven. And if it goes down here, it clashes with this seven. So this square, I think, ends up here, which means that's a seven, which seems to mean that's a three. So now we get to, let's, let's just tidy up our colors a bit. I'm gonna get rid of the red coloring. This, I'll make a red move, oh, hang on. I was gonna make it a red pawn movement to, the, oh, not a black pawn movement, a red pawn movement to here. This, I'll make, a blue diagonal although will that confuse me with what the Queen's done it might do I'll make this purple so that ends up there that seven I've just got gives me that digit as a seven now that seems to equate to this pawn so this pawn is now pushed two cells when I've been pushing pawns I've, I've used red so I'm going to keep going with the red now how many sevens have I got in the grid now lots five okay so so the seven in this box is in one of two positions but <laughs> i mean is it possible that this is a seven even though the, the the bishop has moved off the square might be i don't know i don't have a strong feeling about that maybe i should have 
Okay, what other sevens have we not got then? We, ha we haven't got a seven down here. Ah, okay, so there's a th those two squares are a three seven pair, I believe, because oh, I can't I can't see it very well, but they are a three seven pair because there's there was a three in these cells and now there's a seven as well. So this is three and seven. Right. Okay. Well, that's big. That is big news for the following reason. That means that my rook. Oh, I think I already knew. Did I? I did already know this. Well, no, I didn't know this rook was moving, actually, which it is now. I just knew it was operating in the bottom row and therefore forcing this rook to move. But now we can actually say because this cell can't be a six, this rook actually has to move. And that cell can't be a six. So the rook moves at least to here where it hits the bishop square. But we already know this bishop moves, so it could probably stop here. Ah, no. Ah, hang on. It can't stop there because of this. This is really complicated again. But this six, this pawn is operating in this column. So this moves again to the queen square. Oh, but hang on. Hang on. This queen, I thought, could move to these squares. Oh, it can still. Oh, but hang on. How does it move to there if there's a rook moving in the other direction? That doesn't work, does it? <laughs> We're getting into the a bit of philosophy here, but I don't think this is possible. If this rook moves to this square in this puzzle, where every piece can only move once at a maximum, then in doing that, there is no way this queen can simultaneously move in this direction and sort of cross the path of the rook magically. That does not work. So this queen, because the rook comes at least to there. Oh no, in fact, I know where the rook comes. Because the rook's a six and there's a six in this box. So the rook goes there. That's the only place it can go. Because of this pawn. This being a three or a seven. And that six. So that is a rook at the end of the day. Therefore, I can draw that in. I will draw the line in with... Mm, no, that's the pawn color. I'm going to use blue. Um, and therefore... Well, therefore, let's come back to the logic I was thinking about with this queen. Because this queen now, I simply cannot just run over the rook that's come into its square. So I think this queen moves diagonally. Now, where couldn't it go? It can't go here because there's a three looking at it. Oh, and there's a three looking at it up there. It, oh, well, it can't go there, which seems to be a four, six or an eight now. So it has to go there. So that is a three, which means that's a three. Hang on, this is brilliant. This is three. This is seven. This is a queen, uh, which I will make a purple move. Um... I'm wondering whether I can get seven in the top box. I think it's in one of two positions. And. OK, now the knight now is has an eight on it. So this knight, can that really go? Oh, it can go there because the pawns moved out of that. OK, so we don't know where this knight goes. It goes there, there or there. And all three of those, I think, are still possible. But. Uh, but nothing. I've got nothing to tell you about that. This is going to be a long video, I fear. Although slowly but steadily, I am eking out where these pieces end up. I'd love to know if if at the end of the game, you know, the, the order of the pieces moving would have been totally forced because, you know, of cell, 
you know, in order to make sure that pieces could move through the correct squares. You know, for for example, this queen clearly had to move to this square before this rook moved to this square. Um, what a oh, hang on. Oh, you see, I was just thinking about that in the context of this this bishop. Now that bishop, annoyingly, might be able to stay where it is, but if it moves, where does it go? It has to go along this diagonal. Do I know whether that moves or not? And if it, well, all I'm thinking is it can't go in those squares, so it would have to go up there. Now it can't go here in this column because of this four, so it would have to go there. Which would, ah, and that, ah, oh no, it could, it could still go here because the pawn could move first to there and then the bishop could slide in behind it this is this is not easy i defy anybody who says this is easy even the chess players i don't think are going to find this that straightforward um what about this then have i thought about this cell recently uh, that's an eight it might be influenced by oh this Oh, I wish I knew whether this pawn jumped up there because if that pawn goes there that knight's got to go there and then this might have to stay put I'm not sure actually it might be able to get into row 6 because there might not be an 8 there anymore uh, I'm not sure um, so what what piece or number is it that I've not concentrated on? I feel like I've done a lot in the top row. What's, what's happened to this cell? That is a, a bishop that's position has been taken by a rook, so it needs to move. This pawn has been pushed, so it could move along this diagonal. What is it? A six? Or it could move along this diagonal. But only if this pawn, well, depending on what that pawn does. So actually that cell doesn't look under that much pressure. What about... I'm struggling now. I can't actually see where to look. I'm, go I'm going to go back to Stoke again <laughs> in the hope that saves me. Um... Ah, I've got a one from this knight looking over here. So that's important because now, well, actually, hang on, hang on a minute. Why did I assume that this cell had to move? Why did I assume that this pawn had to come into this, these cells here? Oh, it does. No, it does because there's a one here, so it can't stay where it is. Okay, that's fair enough then. So it's actually it actually goes there, and now I can draw its um, draw its path in. It does that. So that and that's important. Look, because now where does one go in this? Oh, I could have got this before. I just didn't see it. Sorry. So that's got to be a one. Now I've got to put one in this bottom box somewhere. And it doesn't seem to be able to go in those cells. So it's either here or here. Uh, four, eight, one, four, eight in this. Oh, there's a one here. It's really hard to see. Sorry. Again. <laughs> so that that is a one. Okay. So now I have got, I can get all the ones in the no, no, why did it highlight? When I double click the ones, oh, it hasn't highlighted it. It's just because the black box makes it look like it's highlighted. Sorry. Okay, so now, oh, okay, I see. There's a one in one of these two cells, but it doesn't have to correspond to a piece, does it? Bobbins, right. Uh, what about then these? Those are two, four, and eight. So this square. And this square are a four eight pair now. I'm suddenly realizing now I can just about detect there's a one in row one, column four. So there's got to be a two in this column in one of those two cells. Which is probably important. 
So the two in... I don't know. It's, it's still... How many twos have we got? How many twos have we got on pieces in this puzzle? Um, one. I can't see what that is. I thought oh, that, that was the queen, wasn't it? Which goes here. Right. So. Let's go back to... Let's go back to this king. That king has to move to one of these two cells. Now, do I now know which cell that is? It can go here because this pawn is moving. Do I know whether this pawn is moving? That pawn is a six. Well, okay, there are... So if, ah, that's interesting. So if I can force this six to stay put, which I nearly can, then this would have to advance. No, actually, I want it the other way around. I want the, uh, I want that to have to stay put, so that king has to come here. But I can't force that, can I? Um, Right, let's try this one instead then. So this king is coming vertically or into that cell. One of those two is this king. Oh, of course, of course. Right, so let's use our X-wing on threes here. It rules out three from all of those cells. That three rules out three from those cells, so that's a three. And now, one, two, three, four, I've got six, oh, I've got six threes. So all that's done actually is fill in a digit that is useless. Oh, bobbins. Right, so there's still this sort of dichotomy we've got to figure out across these threes here. So I need one of these to be forced to stay still. If either of these is forced to stay still, I will know which position the king goes to. Ah, oh, I had an amazing thought then. I had an amazing thought, but I've realized it's the wrong way. I suddenly thought, that's a queen. So how could that move out of the way? Because won't that won't it leave the king in check? Actually, maybe that's not. Hang on, is that is, is that a real thing? How can that? Oh no, I know. Well, hmm. I'm wondering how that can be a legal move in this. But but I suppose this could have gone there before that happened, or that queen could arrive on this square later than this move was played. Uh, hang on, this is all very complicated now. Where, because that move, that move there, which exposes the king to this queen, hang oh, you know what I might have been better doing, I've suddenly realized, is I could have used the letter tool to label like cells like this. I could have put Q in. Oh, oh, hang on. What on earth did I do then? I don't know. I want it to just have a, oh, I see, because I can't pencil mark it with a digit uh, and have a big, and have a big number in it. So that's, that's, that's something I can't do in the software. One of the very few things I can't do in the software. Um, but what I was trying to think about, this queen. You see, this this move is made. See, this queen here has to get there before that bishop gets there. Because if that once that bishop is there, this queen could never have just moved through it. 
we only allow one move per thing. So the first thing that happened was that the queen went there. Then the second thing that happened was that the bishop went there, because if this pawn was pushed before that, this bishop could not have gone there. So the first thing that happened was the queen went here. The second thing that happened was the bishop went here. The third thing that happened was that pawn went there. But So there must be a piece here that allows that to happen. So what piece is it that we're putting here that blocks this queen from checking this king? Or, yeah, this queen is here. Or, don't know, I'm getting myself confused now. Right, what piece can get here? No, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. No piece can get there in one move from the start of a game of chess, apart from this one, which is black boxed. Hang on. So this, right, this cell I think is empty of pieces. So if there's a queen on this cell, how can this be pushed? Unless this king is not there. And if this king is not there, it's a, we do know this king moves, but it can't move here. If it moves there, it's in check. Yeah, it is. It's, it's in check because this move, this pawn push happens after this queen is in this position. So this queen is sitting there and it observes this pawn pushing. So at that point, at the point that happens, this king is it's going to sort of be, well, this is an illegal move to do this unless this is not check, which implies that this king must have already gone from this from this diagonal, I think. So I think this king goes here. Yeah, because if we're going to try and move the king here, we know that's after this queen is on this space. So I think I'm already in check to be honest. And this, oh, and this is, and this is a digit, uh, sorry, a, a piece I can put here within one move. No, there's no piece that can get there apart from that pawn itself, which we know is pushed. So you can't, you know, you can't get another piece to here. So there's no piece. Once that pawn moves, the only piece that can get here is the king, which isn't allowed to because the queen is going to put it in check. And for this to have been a legal move, this king must not be on this cell. So it must be there. So that's a three. Right, hang on, let me just think about this because that that is doing things, isn't it? That's taking the position. I don't want to use red because that's my pawn pushing color. I'm gonna use blue. So the king moves forward. Now that puts a three in this cell, which pl puts a three here in box two, which seems to take the position of a seven. So that now seems to have to be seven, if I trust my pencil marks. Now that, in turn, seems to say this can't be a seven. So that plonks a seven here, which is okay, because we already knew this pawn was moving. How, and I think I've done all the sevens in the grid. But that's not where this story ends, is it? Because this pawn now, which has a two on it, can't live in this cell. So it advances into that cell. So that's a pawn push there. This, this diagonal, this four is getting very cluttered, isn't it? This four thing here, it, well, it's got two possible ways of the world now. 
because the only way it can move on this diagonal it can't go into a position with a 7 on it and if it moves on this diagonal it can't go here because of this pawn so it has to go there which would prevent this pawn from pushing I don't know uh, these squares are 4, 6 and 8 now by Sudoku so it might be that we can do some Sudoku that's going to help us to understand what's going on in the final saying the final bits of this puzzle I'm realizing I've only got half the digits in probably so that's wishful thinking that's not three anymore um, oh do I know whether this moves yet no I don't I genuinely don't think I know that that's moving okay it is useful to have these lines to remind me where things have moved um, okay <sighs> oh dear so now I'm stuck again um, looking at the time of the video over an hour I'm not I'm not embarrassed by that to be honest if I could get it done in the next say 15 20 minutes I think that would be a perfectly reasonable time for a puzzle like this um, but that is saying that's saying things that I haven't really even started I haven't I definitely haven't achieved that yet let's put it like that so it must be that I have to focus wait, oh, I suppose it could be Sudoku as well Oh, this, that digit definitely, or this piece feels under pressure. That bishop has moved, that bishop has moved, that, oh, that bishop has not moved. Can I work out where this bishop goes? well again these two have such an in, sort of intrinsic relationship with each other don't they if this stays put this has to move but actually it looks like it's got some options along this diagonal ah that ah I tell you what I hadn't what I hadn't uh, notated here this becoming a three is that king moving to this square that's important that's important look because that king I don't know what color I'm going to use for this royal orange there we go this king moving to here is forcing this six to move this 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 pawn is now pushing into one of those cells which means that's no longer able to be a six that's no longer able to be a six So that, well, that might matter, might it? Um, so if I knew that this knight went here, then that would be a six and that would be, that would feel like some progress. This bishop could still come along this diagonal. And because, oh no, because this pushes, it doesn't stop this one pushing. But the only cell this could go to would be there. And then I get a six, a six, and a one. That feels like it would really do some damage to the puzzle, actually. So I bet, that, I bet you this pushes at the end of the day. We've just got to work out why. It's probably something like this can't move or... Where else have I got sixes on pieces in the puzzle? or I've not got many pieces now that I've not really moved actually can I do something with this one again this one is there a reason it can't stay still what would those sorts of reasons be a piece moved into its square well I don't think a piece has moved into its square and if it does move 
it literally has to go there which would put a four here which would force this to stay still which would put an eight here and a four here golly this is complicated uh, right that square is two four or eight by the medium of sudoku that square is the same two four or eight um <laughs> oh, i'm sorry if you're all seeing how to do this i hope you can forgive me it doesn't feel like this is the easiest puzzle i've ever done in my life if i'm really honest um so in the top row, I've moved the rook. Have I moved this? I've moved the knight. Have I moved that piece? That's that's this bishop. I've already thought about that. Then the queen has moved over here. The king has moved here. The bishop has moved here. This knight we know is moving to one of those two cells, but I don't think I know which. And this rook has moved here. So the top row, I've basically figured out a lot this row those two stay the same this is a pawn which which we know is advancing into one of these cells yeah there's, there's an awful lot of tension if i could resolve which way round the ones went down here that would be massive as well Maybe it's all about this knight. Is there some reason that this, if this knight went here, then this, oh, okay. If this knight went here, it would have to do it after this had pawn had pushed here. So this would have to be a six. This would have to be a one. That would become a one. But I don't see what's wrong with that. It's, it's perfectly possible for that, that pawn to be pushed before this knight jumps over here and blocks the pawn's path. There's got to be a two in one of those cells I'm now seeing by Sudoku in case that's somehow relevant, which means there's got to be a two in one of those cells by Sudoku. But that's fine, I think. If, yeah, so again, if I can figure out which way round the twos go here, then I would know which of these pawns is getting, is foot being forced to move. This pawn is forced to move. It might be that I've got to pencil mark a lot here. I'm very reluctant to do that, but it could be that that's sort of a key to making more progress. Oh, hang on, this pawn. That pawn's got an eight on it, but it's got a one in, in its cell. So that's got to push, so it's got to push there. Ah, found something. So that's an eight. That becomes a four, six pair. That becomes not an eight. Better put the we better put the the pawn movement in. So this becomes a four six pair. So what do we get in this column then? Along with that, we get twos and eights into those squares. Oh, is that true? Wow. Yeah. Okay. In column one, I've got a two eight pair left, but I seem to have a two over here in box two. Yeah, that two does that. So that, that means that cell is an eight, which means that cell is a two. Which might do something, but I'm not immediately saying, oh, where does, where does eight go here now? Eight goes there. Oh, come on. Go on, go on, go on, crack. That's a four, six pair now. So that means I should know what that digit is by Sudoku. That is a two. And if that's a two, it's not a four. These are the knowledge bombs you get to share on Cracking the Cryptic. And if it's not a four, this advances. 
but I don't know how far it advances. I just know it moves. Ah, bobbins. Um, so this moves. I don't quite know how to... Okay, but let's... This 8 means that seems to have to be a 4. So that's not 4. So where does 8 go in this row? It's got to go there. Which means that's a 4, that's a 4, and that's a 6. This square here now is a 6 by Sudoku. That's, so that's staying put, which is not what I was expecting. So that digit there has stayed. Now that means that this digit over here must move, which we already knew from the six pencil marks. Oh, bother. Right, what, okay, but what's, we can just do some Sudoku here, can we? That's not eight anymore. Two, four, and six. So that's two or four. That's two, four, or six. Um, and with these digits here are two and, two and something, two and six, is that? Oh, that's big. So that must be the six then. So that's the two. That's a four in the corner. No song for you. That seems to be a six. That seems to be a two. Now. No, we are getting there. We are actually. This is now an eight. So these are a two, four pair. So is that a two or a four? I think so. My Sudoku. I'm going to have to revisit all of these pieces in a minute to find out what's going on with them. But in terms of Sudoku, we are making steady progress. Now we've got a 1-8 pair into those cells. This pawn, which is a 6 pawn, has pushed. So that, that was a forced manoeuvre. And that's... Uh, okay, I'm not sure... I must have done that before the king moved into that position, for what it's worth. Um, now, I'm desperately looking at this, trying to work out what's going on now. But I suspect what we're going to have to do is think about the pieces that I've not worked out where they move to yet. So... <laughs> Oh, okay, there's something I've just noticed. I've got a restriction on, I'll choose orange again. This knight has moved now, and I think it's moved surprisingly. Oh, hang on, let's do it that way. It's moved to that cell. What does that do? I don't think that does anything because this one has the same number on it, but it can't go to this cell. So it's actually, it can stay still, which is annoying because otherwise it would have to go here and probably the whole puzzle would resolve. Um, or is there some... Ah, yeah, here we go, here we go. Remember this piece here. Now that's a pawn, and it has pushed. Doesn't look like it has, but it has. It's pushed to here. So I need to make my knight color a different color there to make that clearer, like that. Now this, so this four here is not this. It's not this bishop. So, I think that bishop must stay still. And if it stays still, it gets ringed. And not only does it get ringed, it gets a four into that cell. Now that's taken one of the positions of ones. So that becomes a one, that becomes a one, that becomes an eight. This becomes a two. Uh, that becomes an eight, this is terrifying. Oh no, 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 I've got a horrible deadly pattern here. Oh dear, dear, dear. What have I done wrong? Hang on, let me just get the 8 there. This is now a 2. That's a 4. Everything is working apart from this pattern, but I don't understand at the moment. This must be the most complicated pencil marked puzzle we've ever had, by the way. So this... So we don't know whether this knight has moved or not. 
it could have done or it could have stayed still <laughs> look at that I don't think I genuinely don't think we know um hang on so what on earth am I meant to do now have I determined what each piece is doing that requires each piece to either have a line drawn from it or to have be in a square box. So I'm just scanning as I say that to see whether or not I'm relatively confident that's, a, that's being pushed. That's a queen, it's gone over here. That's a knight, it's gone there. This has been pushed. This one has been pushed. That stays still. There's nothing, I don't think, in the bottom rows that I've not done. So is there a piece up here I've not moved? That one, that one's pushed, that's pushed. Red line means pushed. Those stay the same. Ah, this is, I've broken it. This is so annoying. I don't know what I did wrong. This is a two. No, it's a one, and it goes there. Ah, oh, I haven't put that in. That does that apparently now this goes there the king goes there the queen goes there the bishop the bishop is a oh the bishop i haven't moved the bishop ah and the bishop is a six and that will break oh good grief good grief right where does that digit go now look at this, and the reason I think this is incredibly clever is that bishop, it needs to be a 6 somewhere on the diagonal. Well, it could have been this 6, except we know that's the pawn because of my pencil marking. So actually, the only 6 it can get to is that, which is absolutely amazing, because that means I can do the PS, the yellow resistance, and that's got to go there. So that is the bishop. That's finished the deadly pattern off. And I want to say we've done the puzzle. I'm just going to click tick. Yes. <laughs> that was amazing, Christian. What a puzzle that is. That was, that was a serious workout. Um, now, the only thing that's troubling me is this knight which I don't know whether it moves or not and I don't know whether I'm meant to know whether it moves or not I don't know whether you can tell whether it's had to move or not no hang on hang on hang on white moves first in a game of chess and every Ah, no, so I can count how many pieces. Hang on. So black has had, as it's had, well, it could have had 16 moves, but it hasn't because it hasn't moved three of its, three of its pieces. So it's, it's, black has moved 15 times. So white Ah, this is still not going to do it, is it? White has also moved 15 times. So if this stays the same, no, that's, that's fine, isn't it? I think it's fine. If this is, if this is an unmoved piece, it gets black bordered like that. And that would imply, I think, that white has had less moves than black, which is not possible. So instead, I think you guys are going to have to correct me if I'm wrong about this. But the, I mean, this is a beautiful thing if it's true. That has to be a move. And now we can say that white and black have moved an equal number of times, which is fine. I wonder if that's right. That that's a stellar puzzle. I mean, it's t it's an incredibly long video, and I I hope you can forgive me on a, a Sunday night for that. Uh, I'm almost tempted to do a sort of premiere for this because this is such an unusual thing. It it is quite simply the best example of a chess Sudoku I can possibly imagine. It's it's a 
And while it is a genius construction, how, how on earth you set this? Just think about what we've had to go through logically to get to a solution. You know, where the, the way the pieces move and they interact is all forced to th this point. Just, just give that a moment's thought. Imagine you were on a desert island and had to come up with something this good. Using this rule set, I don't, I mean, that fills me with fear. <laughs> um, and yet it, it, it's beautiful. And this whole stuff around this queen thing here, I'd love to know if that's what you're meant to do. And I'd love to know if I, if I got to grips with that properly. It felt logical when I was explaining it, but it, I mean, it really was important, the order of the moves. It's, this is this is wonderful. I mean, yesterday we featured one of the best puzzles I've ever seen. And in a different way, this is absolutely the same sort of thing again. It's another puzzle that will live long in the memory. Christian Koenig, take a bow, my friend, and let me know how you got on in the comments. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Mm -hmm.